Have you noticed hmm, that the supermarket shelves are empty? So let me know in the comments down below. Now I think to myself that maybe I should move to the United Kingdom from France, where in France all the supermarket shelves are relatively full. It's not doing me any favours, you see, because I'm on a diet, you see, so I thought, I know, move to the UK and uh, I can go on a Brexit diet. If there's no food, I will naturally lose weight. Sounds like an ideal scenario, don't you say? Because it's true. There's trouble in store for post-Brexit Britain. Thanks to higher cost, increased red tape and supply chain uh, damage. And it's leading to a country that happens to have, uh, well, empty shelves. I thought myself, I don't need that article. No. This is a topic I've well researched. On more than one occasion, I've read the article and it's... What a complete and utter mess. That's Brexit for you. Absolute flipping mess. And no, I won't be moving to the United Kingdom. It'll be the last thing on my list, on my bucket list. Not moving to the United Kingdom. Been there, done that. Not for me. Thank you. Now, the UK is suffering with, well, stockouts and, uh, well, other supermarket shortages. The whole thing's a flipping mess, it is. God's sake. Now, I worry for my kids and stuff, you see. Now, some supermarkets, they're not struggling quite so much because maybe they're in the cities and they've got a relatively good supply chain. But the supermarkets that are more on the fringes, the village supermarkets, they're the ones that are going to be really struggling. To get fresh produce. You see, the, the haulage companies are going to be delivering to the closest places first. And obviously, just to make more money. No. Oh, dear me. So, supermarket stockouts, empty shelves, have become increasingly prevalent in UK supermarkets. And the blame, it pretty much lies squarely with, obviously, the Brexiters and Brexit itself. It's a consequence of Brexit. Because all of the numpties kept saying to themselves, I just want my Brexit. Like some Jacob Reese mog who thinks food banks are... I think it's rather uplifting. That's what he reckons. But they're not. No. And even the food banks are struggling to get the food. Three million old food bank parcels in the last year. Been handed out by Trust for Trust, for instance. Three million. Three million suffering souls. Starving souls, you could say. Got over a million kids that are sleeping on the floor. Do you think it's broken? Because I think it is. The whole system is... Well, it's collapsing around us. And yet, the likes of Kemi Badnock is trying to portray it as some kind of success. <laughs> now, Brexit has compelled supermarkets to alter the way they do business, you see. Now, transition from, like, oh, uh, well, day one to uh, full, well, day two. Order one day, they get it the next. And now they're having to do it three to four days ahead it's not very helpful with fresh produce so you can over well they can over order just to be safe well that means losses and losses means less profits and that gets passed on to the customer you see well the shift has um pretty much made uh then more how to put it um risk adverse that's it, the phrase i'm not risk averse resulting in more frequent stockouts because they don't want to take the risk of having produce that's just rotting on the shelves and then you got the obviously like the same minute ago but the geographically challenged um supermarkets you see the uk is uh it's quite a complex market actually being it's an island and all that and it kind of worked before brexit 
Opposed Brexit, oh my giddy on. Foreign suppliers, that well, they find the added red tape and the expenses associated with supply in the UK, well, they find it unappealing. Surprise, surprise. Opting for easier and closer markets without hard borders. Yes, they're looking for markets within the EU. I know what you're going to say. What about the CPTPP? Have you tried shipping a lettuce from, I don't know, I'm going to say New Zealand? What are you going to do with that? It'll be limp. It'll be as limp as Liz Truss and her pork markets. Probably. Then we've got the delayed introduction of um, of checks on who'd enter in the United Kingdom, exasperating the problem and uh, filling the supermarket shelves what we can get with meat that's half rotten or salmonella and other diseases. Well, small firms, they're especially vulnerable. And they're facing... Potential business, uh, well, strangulation, really, I suppose. That's how you suppose you could put it. They do these bureaucratic hurdles. All this red tape. Every consignment they do, you know, can cost an additional 500-odd euros. But it be a pallet or a lorry load. Well, it depends on the size of your business, doesn't it? Well... Oh, I find it so frustrating, I really do. Now, one professor, professor I can't remember his name now, uh, Michael, something to do with G, Gaziak or something, Gaziak, I think it's Gaziak, or Gazarek, Gaziarek. Anyway, this geezer, <laughs> he explains um, that the collapse of, of trade post Brexit. Is mainly on UK imports from uh, imports from the European Union. And as many EU suppliers you see, they find the UK a less uh, crucial market amid uncertainty and all the bureaucracy and what have you. Now the EU exports to the United Kingdom. Well, it was a considerable amount, but it's actually it's decreased by twenty to twenty-five percent. Don't listen to Kimmy Bad Doc, whatever you do. And this is all affecting the availability of, of goods in UK supermarkets. Well, efforts to improve the situation, such as uh, potential agreements on food standards with the European Union, by the Labour Party, for instance, that's one of their things, isn't it? You know. And like, uh, what was it Lord Frost's? Lord Frost's equivalence agreement i well, failed and the eu is not even keen on reopening well deep negotiations because that's not you know people saying about 2025 i'll be renegotiate the deal no we can't it's just a timeline to see if it's working or not and see what can we do to make it work if it's possible even it's not a renegotiation at all it's a tweak it's a sticky plaster it's a patch well, the UK's existing trade deals with other countries and that's it, that then have lower food standards, mega farms, what have you, which goes against that, well, animal health and, and the EU's own rules on that as well. That's all making life a lot, a lot harder. The Brexit's impact has become ingrained in the British economy now. Supermarkets and stalls and various um industries facing increased costs you can't get away from it they're in they get away from it they're there planes the oil you can see and then you've got the delays and all this extra bureaucracy or add more costs and well the situation is expected to worsen not get better no with the introduction of food import checks especially in 2024, if it ever happens, it is. Well, Brexit's legacy is characterised by higher costs, I suppose. Reduced choice and uh, more red tape. Lasting damage. And less appealing um, business environment. 
Forced the residents to adapt to stockouts and empty shelves and long waits for online orders. Is that flippin' mess? Brexit Britain? Broken Britain, more like it. What you tell me? Leave it in the comments down below. Because I do read the comments, but you probably already know. Are we ever going to get over this? I don't think so. You can't replace a mark that happens to be on your doorstep and think it's going to be an improvement. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, if you want to support the channel, you can do it on Patreon or buy us a coffee. And the links are down below that it is. Oh dear, there's Patreon, there's, let's say, buy me a coffee, we've got memberships, there's super thanks, which is just down there, you know. But the links are in the description. But also, we're planting trees here in France, we're planting a thousand trees on two hectares of land, and we're going to be planting, when the rain flipping stops, we'll be, it's about a month for rain. Crikey. Anyway, when the rain stops, we will be planting the trees, and the ground should be nice and soft now, so, uh, and, and well lubricated. <laughs> So, uh, if you want to make a donation, basically we will part a tree on your behalf, and I'll make a sign to go with the tree. Could be just your name, or maybe a message, but um, you know, remembrance even to your loved ones, or to a pet, or you know, it's just a nice thing to do. But we'll also make a lot of bat box, bat, um, bat roosts, and uh, bird boxes, you know, little bird houses, and what have you, and other animal habitats, because that's what's kind of really what it's really about. It's a rewilding project, and we're trying to get the animals. Even here in France. So, if you'll be a part of that and help the little animals, the link is also in the description down below. I will be posting videos on that very soon when it stops raining. Anyway, toodaloo.